Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Squires, The Nurturing Coach, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to answer a question that I get asked a lot, which is, can I force my children to see me? The dynamics that I tend to work with are around parental alienation, where her child has been psychologically manipulated to reject the parent. And so when we talk about forcing the child, what we're saying is this child has been manipulated to reject you. But as part of their survival mechanism, they have to refuse to come and see you, they have to refuse contact, even if it is in a court order. So there's a few different ways we can look at this. So the first one is legally. Legally, yes, you can force your child to see you. It's in a court order, a legal document. However, the reality of that is much more difficult. So there's, there's a moral level of that is, is it morally correct and ethically correct to force a child who is a victim in this and is struggling and is feeling high anxiety because they're being made to choose between both of you with the basically with a gun against their head and so they have no choice but to reject you and forcing them not to reject you does cause them an awful lot of anxiety as I say, this is in cases where the other parent does not support contact, although they say they do. What goes on behind the scenes is they definitely do not support contact. And the other angle for that is practically, I mean, younger children are much easier. You can literally pick them up and take them with you. Not to say that they won't kick off and cry and kick out at you because their survival instinct is kicking in, that fear response of, I know the, I'm feeling very anxious and I've been conditioned to think that you're the one who creates this anxiety in me. So of course I don't want to be with you because you're the reason I feel like this. But actually it's the person that they're saying they want to stay with. So although you, it is much easier and normally what I find is even with children who do have that response, they do kick off and I'm talking sort of up to the age 10 or 11, teenagers and those children will kick off but actually once they're away from the person that's creating the anxiety, not you, the other parent, they calm down straight away and it can happen within minutes, it can literally be like the flicking of a switch. It's part of the performance that they feel they have to put on. They have to show the other parent that they really don't want to go with you because they know that's what's expected of them. They know that that means that they'll get their needs met as best as they possibly can in that environment. But as soon as they're away from that, they fall back into normal. The hard part is obviously getting them away. Younger children, that is much easier. For teenagers, however, that's a lot harder because physically you can't move them because they're bigger, they're maybe as big as you, um, and they will shout and they will scream, and it's a lot more vocal, and actually it, it doesn't look good on you. It adds to that, um, it adds to the narrative that the ex has created, which is, you're the problem and if you're trying to force a teenage out to anyone who's looking yeah that looks pretty harsh doesn't it that looks that looks quite abusive and so for teenagers it's a lot harder to force them to so what do you do you, do you walk away do you keep letting this happen do you kind of give in to the demands well in my advice my advice would be in my, in my experience it then would be the time to seek therapeutic intervention, to ask the court to look at counselling between you and the child, to explore why they are rejecting you, to explore how you can work towards um, bringing that relationship back together. Now, obviously, the ex isn't going to want that to happen, but part of this is 
helping the child to show that you still want to have a relationship with them because if you walk away what happens in the background is the other parent then starts going see i told you he didn't he, they didn't love you clearly that their other family is more important or you're just not that important to them don't worry i'll look after you i'm here for you so it just adds to that narrative whereas if you keep providing solutions and keep looking at ways to talk to them communicate keep those lines open eventually the child will have their own realization and see seek you out now i don't know when that will happen the, obviously the faster that you are able to reach a point of acceptance and and realize that this is about the children and is about keeping those lines of communication it's not jumping in and responding in the way your ex wants you to which is to get angry which is to drag them which is to look like you are controlling them that's what they want because like i say to an observer that's exactly what it would look like the quicker you are able to offer solutions which are child focused the faster you feel better and then that breaks down a lot of the other narrative around this as well I hope you found that useful. We are releasing our Get Caught Ready program, which covers more like this in depth. It helps you with that step-by-step -step process of rewriting the narrative that the ex has set, not playing into their narrative, not being baited, managing your own emotions. I will put details of the course in the description um, and it is on offer at the moment as well, given the times that we are in. If you've got any questions, do uh, um, pop them below. If you've got video ideas, things that you want me to cover, then again, pop them below and I will cover them in forthcoming videos. But take care of yourself, stay safe, save, stay home and save lives. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.